We have filed four petitions in Florida against stalking on Lynette and John Crook. And Judge Craig DeThomasis sealed it all. He doesn't want you to see it, but we're going to show you anyway. Have you heard anybody shooting in the area today? Two of these petitions are filed by me, one against Lynette and one against John Crook. And two of these petitions are filed by George, one against Lynette and one against John Crook. And as soon as we filed them, Judge Craig DeThomasis immediately sealed them within the legal system. And we had to pay extra money to have them unsealed to be released to us. And now we're going to release it to you. And we'll tell you exactly why he sealed them in just a bit. So they're thick. There's no doubt. They're thicker than a snicker. But in all reality, Lynette and Crook have done quite a few things. And you can see here, Jeremy Hales, on behalf, I'm the petitioner, respondent, Lynette Preston, or Lynette, however you want to go. And we talk about the addresses here, right? This is thick. Now, I've got to describe her. She's white. Although she claims she's from a black family. I'm still not sure how that happens. But as a citizen reporter, I gotta, I gotta put the information down as I see it. Now I'm colorblind. Color means nothing to me. Gender means nothing to me. Your religion, your these things mean nothing to me. I love people for who they are. Be a good person, I'm gonna love you. Be a horrible person, I ain't gonna be that fond of you. But she says she's white, female. That's probably up for debate as well. Date of birth, 8562. Weight, 115. Height, 52. You know, these are guesses. Apparently now she's 80 pounds, according to some of her supporters. And the interesting thing is, um, a firearm weighs well under two pounds. And that can be, uh, that can unalive anybody in a heartbeat. All right, what kind of vehicle? A Jeep White. Uh, it's a Gladiator, right? Oh, nicknames. Michelle, Lacey, Alexis. Let's, let's just be honest. This is not long enough for all the names. Not in a long shot. Now, previously we knew of 39 aliases. Now there's 40 because she's changed her name to Michelle Preston Sr. New alias for her. New alias, new con. Okay, all of the things that she's done. She's committed stalking, previously interacted, harassed, stalked, cyber stalked. She's already been found guilty on all of this. As a matter of fact, you're going to see it here in just a moment. And threatened... For that and harm, family harm, uh, intentionally injured, killed, family, pet, no. That's the one thing she hasn't done. She has never, ever, ever been on our properties that we have allowed. Never. Now, she would dump rotten food at the entrance of the gate in hopes of getting money in return from us. But she has never, and Crook has never been invited or allowed on our property. He's trespassing. It's all on video. Yes, yeah. That's, that is, the, the trespassing is all on video, which we'll get to she later. She would take chalk and draw weird smiley faces. At our at entrance the, at road. our, at our road, on which is. On the public road. Yeah. Okay. Used, threatened against petitioner weapons. Yep. Guns circled right there. Criminal uh, violence, if known. Yep. They have records. Both of them have records. As a matter of fact, she's had an injunction to keep her away from her own grandkids. Judge issued for good cause. He has domestic violence. She has theft in her background as well. But she wants to claim she's got a clean record. There's nothing clean about either of these two individuals. And we go on. Another order of protection. Yep, we already have one. So let's see what happens here. Uh, we've got to go on through all this information. I'm asking for George to be protected as well. Understand there's some information in here for George's own protection and for others' protection that I've redacted. And this is a good time to remind everybody, don't ever, ever contact anybody that we are sharing the news about. You can be educated. You can even be entertained. But do not contact anybody except the proper authorities if you feel you saw something that was inappropriate. All right, we're going to get into the actual, that's the copy of the petition. Now, this is my letter to Judge Craig DeThomasis. It is a two-pager. And there is information redacted. And I think the easiest thing to do is just read it. Now, you're going to see emotion and raw emotion in this that you typically don't see in a What the Hales video. Because there are things that we don't show with the entire world. Yet, this is so deep and this is so concerning. We are starting 
to show some of these deep emotions and deep fears. So presiding judge, that would be Craig DeThomasis. My current life's work involves video vlogging my life and sharing it on the platform known as YouTube. And as such, a fan base has grown and certain individuals have inappropriately stalked me to the point of intentionally purchasing property directly across the street from me in an attempt to receive monetary donations and promotion. This couple, known as Lynette Preston and John Crook, stalked myself and George to the town of Otter Creek. My first interaction with Lynette Preston and John Crook was when I received an email in late 2021 explaining that they were my new neighbors and they needed my help to move a tree with my tractor. Come to find out later, they lied about owning the property at that point in time and therefore they lured me into trespassing and removing a tree that didn't even belong to them. That's the first lie from this pathetic, habitual, pathological liar, Lynette. Once I refused to give them money, in-kind donations, and promotion on YouTube, they became uh, they began a hate campaign and encouraged others to join them as well. They created multiple Facebook pages and groups with the following, including but not limited to Otter Creek, Florida politics, and other things. Otter Creek friends and family. Otter Creek, the heart of Otter Creek. Otter Creek, Jeremy Hales, the coward of Levy County. It's a shell thing times two. And her current one, Otter Creek. But understand, this isn't limited. We know of. 14 pages right now, which she lied under oath in her deposition. Both Lynette Preston and her paramour, yes, I said it, paramour, and her paramour, John Crook. Yeah, I did. I said it. It's right there on purpose, throwing her own words back in her face. Her paramour, John Crook, used these pages to intimidate and cause fear for both myself and George. They use social media accounts and the following to incite harm by encouraging other social media members to attack myself and George through dark web tactics. We have all the screenshots. All right. Crook did it. Who else did it, George? Oh, that's right. Victoria Munsell. Wikipedia. Victoria Munsell incriminating herself. You know, you can't even write this garbage. This is so insane. And birds of a feather always flock together. Victoria is just as mentally unstable as Lynette and John Crook. Posting our private address and phone number in their hate groups for others to use and information to intimidate, cause fear, and use maliciously. Oh, and who helped her get that? Marla Hughes, another individual that's local in Levy County that no one likes. I don't even think Marla likes herself. She's so despicable. All right. Enraging the LGBTQ group to attack myself and those I love. When it's Crook that keeps saying he's going to see me in a orn and he's trying to shove things up my uh, ectum and George's as well. We're actually going to see that within this very, very thick packet here. Posting the value of our homes and the dates that we will not be there to encourage break-ins and actually harassing Put an S at the beginning. Actually harassing my, both myself and George. They also physically stalked me and my employees to my property in Otter Creek. On May 23rd, 2023, they were issued a cease and desist, which they ignored. The cease and desist only enraged their inappropriate behavior to the point that John Crook pointed a firearm at me in May of 2023. This was not only a threat to shoot. This was not the only threat to shoot me in 2023. On August 22. In 2023, Lynette Preston contacted the mayor of our Ohio village in an attempt to encourage him to push us out of town. They also posted 11 handwritten signs around Otter Creek declaring that I was a child rapist. You can figure out the real word there. We need to uh, adjust for appropriateness. We never know who's viewing, and it's also a family-friendly channel. There are also just a couple examples out of thousands that could be shared within a full hearing. By the way, they will be shared. On 9-25-23, an Ohio court issued an ex parte civil protection order against both Lynette Preston and John Crook. On 11-1-23, an Ohio court issued a two-year protection order against Lynette and John Crook. Both Lynette and John Crook have knowingly broken these civil protection orders on multiple occasions to further intimidate, cause fear for myself and George. They physically stalked us to the Levy County Sheriff's Office in the last week of October 23. 23, as we announced in a live stream, we're going to be visiting there the following day. 
On November 13th, they broke the 500-foot order by placing themselves physically on North Otter Creek Avenue despite the civil protection order, clearly stating they may not be on a public or a private road that we are on. Lynette Preston, she entered the Otter Creek Post Office on November 30th to intimidate George. She knowingly parked right next to George, entered the post office, looked directly at George, which you're going to see a photo of looked directly at George, and carried on as if there was no civil protection order. For these reasons and many others that involve both Lynette and John Crook, I'm living in daily fear of my life. Lynette Preston has publicly posted she will pop a cap in me and others. We're going to show it. John Crook has threatened to shoot me on multiple occasions. We're going to show it. Due to being stalked by these two individuals, I've had to seek professional help to lower my stress. My family doctor has put me on blood pressure medication as in July of 2023. My relationship with George has been severely damaged by our fear of returning to our home in Otter Creek. I fear leaving my property knowing that they may be stalking me everywhere I go. Case in point, just days ago, she stalked us to Walmart and told us we were number one. She gave us the double-fisted, you're number one, but with the middle finger. All right, let's keep going on. Uh, we have had to hire additional security for ourselves so that we can attend town hall meetings after they publicly stated on Facebook they would break the civil protection orders and be present. The Ohio courts have already found both Lynette Preston and John Crook to be a danger to both me and George. I'm requesting that the Florida courts uphold the Ohio court's decision and add Florida injunctions protecting both myself and George from these extremely dangerous people. I'm requesting your intervention before our lives are taken by these two stalkers. Jeremy Hales. Now, the reality is this. The law says, by good faith and measure, they must, they must take the Ohio civil protection orders and give us injunctions. Did Craig DeThomasis do that? Nope. He took this entire packet and sealed it from eyes ever seeing it. Attached within the letter of cease and desist, May 23rd, 2023, John Crook, Lynette Preston, cease and desist, publishing all defamatory, defamatory, this is defamation. Listen, she can have freedom of speech if it's protected speech. If she speaks truth, if she's sharing an opinion, that's okay. When she's inciting hate, when she's inciting harm, that is not protected speech. And defamation is not protected speech. And you see right here, cease and desist, all defamatory statements. We gave them the opportunity. We ignored them for months and months and months. And then we gave them the opportunity to stop. And what happened? It just got worse and worse. So now what we have, now what we have in here as well, is our actual civil protection orders. Now, you can see within the civil protection orders that, and we've shown this before, they must at all times stay 500 feet away from us unless they're on 500 feet away unless they're on their property and we're on our property. Then it can be 10 feet. So when she cries and screams and yells, Jeremy was screaming at us 10 feet. I said it twice. It was a warning, get on your own property. What'd they have to do? Step over, get on their own property. But we weren't on our property. So really in all reality, they were still guilty of breaking the civil protection order because they should have never been in the road anyway. And you're going, wait, you're telling me they can't be in the road? No, they cannot be in the road. As a matter of fact, because of the civil protection order, that clearly states that they may not be on the road, whether it's private or public, at any point in time that we're on the road. Public and private roads, right there, clear as day. As a matter of fact, up here, respondent shall not enter any business, school, any anywhere, it, it doesn't matter whether it's a public or a private facility, and that means town hall. Doesn't matter even if they're employed there. They can't be there, which they're not employed, nor will they ever be. So they've continued to break this civil protection order. So as a matter of fact, we've got one here, the civil protection order against Lynette, and then another civil protection order against Crook. So these are the copies of the civil protection orders. And then we get into the actual evidence. For example, right here, November 5th, what's on my mind is this. I've never been diagnosed with any mental health issues ever. That's odd because we have professional, professional, <laughs> it's, it's, 
It is so disgusting. It will curl your stomach. You will heave at the aspect of the psychiatrist, what she has to say about Lynette. It is disgusting. It will make you vomit. She is a horrible mother. She is a horrible person. Now you say, Jeremy, is that your opinion? Is that actually protected speech? It is my opinion, but I go beyond that. This is a professional psychiatrist opinion, and we will share that in its entirety at the appropriate time. Number two, unfortunately, perjury happened. Oh my goodness, perjury happened? How in the world can perjury happen in the Ohio courts when it's all truth? They oh. all admitted to every screenshot we provided. Except it was all Marla. It was all Marla. And, by the way, we just ordered the audio hearings from Ohio courts. We're going to let you hear Lynette in her own voice claim that everything that happened was Marla Hughes. And Crook is going to claim that everything that happened wasn't me. Well, here we go. Unfortunately, perjury happened, and we were given a two-year no-stalking order that we are not guilty of, but we did not lose our gun rights, and I will post and document in the AM. And I'm going to appeal. It's being filed immediately. Oh, by the way, God bless. Okay, well, let's be clear. Number one, there is no appeal. This is the same thing she's been doing for over a year now, saying, oh, I've got a lawyer. My lawyer said this. Lawyer, I've got a lawyer. She's never had a lawyer. The only time she's ever had a lawyer is recently, and she got silver scam. That's it. Only lawyer she ever got. There is no appeal. There is nothing, nor can she appeal it. There is nothing she can do except obey it. And if she doesn't, she gets the consequences of not obeying it. Now, here's our very first day back in Florida, right here. This is a Levy County deputy. This is Lynette driving her vehicle. And right behind you, you can see my 20-foot trailer and my, you know, that's, that's Ramsey's number two, the blue truck, even though this is in black and white. They stalked us because we had a live stream the night before saying the very first place we were going with was the sheriff's station. Well, she was parked Boom. in a handicapped spot and then intentionally moved right next right to the truck and Right next trailer. to our vehicle after we have screenshots of them saying they're going to put nails and everything under our tires and, and trackers. trackers. So this is a screenshot from the video proving they stalked us immediately within minutes of getting into Levy County. That's part of our petition. Here's another one right here, proving that Crook and her broke the civil protection order. Here's Crook in the middle of the road. And you can go, it's a road. It's a public road. He's allowed to be in it. No, he's not. Not according the law to the civil protection states order. He cannot, nor did he have any need to be in the road. He should have been on his own property. The way to the road is just as flat as it would have been on the road because here's what they keep saying. Well, we need to be on the road to measure our property. Nobody needs to be on the road to measure their property, period. Do you think surveyors came out on our 70 acres and they're on a road measuring? No, they're in the thick and the brush and the woods and the... You name it, the Was water. It, wasn't he on his property putting up their trashy The very fence? next day, he's up putting the trash fence. I mean, it's on his property. On his property, he not on the road. On the road. Not on the road, on his property. Insanity, right? Here's another. Here's another photo of them breaking the civil protection order right here. Currents is 1113. 2023 right there all right so there's another one for the civil protection order now here we go with another post this is from Lynette. all right i'm gonna go ahead i'm just gonna read it it's probably easiest she's such a manic poster and hopefully there's punctuation but i seriously doubt it john was never in the middle of the road wait hold a second did we just not show one two um yeah, we showed two photos of him in the middle of the road. Not to mention our video. Not to mention her video. Perjury! Perjury! He was definitely on the public road, was not on their property. John was never in the middle of the road. That's funny, because in Ohio court, he stated to my lawyer and to the judge that he was in the middle of the road, and he said, suck my, and uh, we'll say brick. Okay, but when asked by my lawyer who he said it to, he says he said it to Lynette. The judge and my lawyer and me are all looking at each other like, what? And my lawyer goes, so you're telling me you told your ex-wife to suck your brick? He In goes, the middle of the yeah. road, measuring. Yeah, yeah, I did. 
Oh my goodness. Oh, J John never made a comment. Well, not to mention. At all. To why, anyone. Why would she tell him to shut up if he Funny. wasn't talking never to Never made you? a comment to anybody, but under oath in Ohio court, which you are going to hear, he admits to the comment, but he says that he said it to Lynette. But me. Nobody made a comment to anyone but me. Well, there you go. Maybe, maybe, maybe she's got it. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my goodness. All right. John was walking on a walker with his leg wrapped up to his thigh, crotch area, as he's still two days post surgery from a knee replacement. Uh, nobody is out walking like that two days from a knee replacement. He did not have a full knee replacement. There's more lies. Let's keep going on. John was dragging a tape measure as we were measuring our property. A neighbor was parked outside of our road facing the opposite direction and was a witness to everything. Funny that witness isn't in court. That witness isn't helping you one bit. That witness is a pathetic individual. That witness is nothing but a horrible individual gossip here in Otter Creek who sold us this land illegally with two known encroachments whose husband, then a runk, comes on the property, trespasses, then destroys property and makes the uh, famous middle finger. Well, this is the same neighbor that we have texts on her calling them crazy. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. We have that and as well. They're nuts. Okay, and she was a witness to everything, and an advocate and a victim's advocate from Akron, Ohio, was on the phone with me for the initial confrontation. I told her I had to go so I could film what was about to happen, and then I videoed it, my video, and it showed the Levy County Sheriff Department two very different things. Odd how two videos can show two different things when it's a video of the exact same thing. Ugh. Oh. Debunked! Yet again. I was given a case number because what happened was harassment to us. It was obvious we, we were on the side of the road because John couldn't push his walker in the grass. Nobody violated any order. And yet John pushed a walker all the way back from their 1.66 acres to the road. Oh, so he can't push a walker in the property. But he was actually doing that exact thing the next day, putting up a trash. A completely and totally trash fence. All right, and what happens next on 11-30-2023? Look where Lynette is looking. looking Straight right in George's camera. Eye-to-eye -eye contact, just like I'm looking at you now. In the camera, she knows She 100%. saw my Jeep right outside. She walked past my Jeep. This is right the at crazy it. part. She breaks the civil protection order, makes eye contact with George. Here is George's vehicle. Here's Lynette next to the vehicle. Here's Lynette parked by George's vehicle. Right there, through the window. And what's she doing out there? She's talking to another resident, Captain Dan Shannon of Otter Creek. She is not fleeing like she's supposed to, not removing herself immediately like she's supposed to. She is completely and totally ignoring the Ohio Civil Protection Orders. As a matter of fact, if she was driving, she'd probably flip both up to Ohio and say, you're number one, you're number one. All right, let's see what else is going on here. Hey, George, I recognize this. Do you recognize this? That's our house. Oh, in that Ohio. is, that is. That's Hale's headquarters. And this is what Lynette has claimed in courts, not one court, both courts, that Marla Hughes did. All right, who is the author, the admin, and the poster here, George? Lynette, Michelle, she'll give you Hale Preston. And who stated this here? Lynette Michelle. And who stated this? Lynette Michelle. How in the world is this Marla Hughes? Now, I'm not a fan of Marla oh, Hughes. She turned off commenting for that post. Oh, can't even claim that Marla came in afterwards. Now, Marla is a horrible, horrific individual with no friends and spends all day on, on Facebook and getting banned from places on Facebook because she's so negative. But I don't see her in here. Can't blame Marla Hughes for this. But what I can tell you is she posted our property. And then she goes on to say, by the way, it's public knowledge. It's public information. Anyone can get it. Just Google him. You'll get his address. You'll see his house. You'll see the cost of it. I mean, what the heck? Oh, wait. Hell, oh, wait. Yeah, we won't say it. And then what does she say right here? I'm not afraid of you. Why in the world... Would Judge DeThomas see this, seal this in the court system, knowing that Lynette has filed a petition stating that she's afraid of me? And she posts right here, I'm not afraid of you. 
Not only that, in Lynette's petition, she posts that I tell everybody, don't contact her. Why would Judge Craig DeThomas even allow this in a courtroom? She obviously has posted she's not afraid. She's obviously in her petition stated that Jeremy tells everybody, don't contact me. There has been no contact on my behalf. And nobody can hold me accountable for third-party contact that she makes up. And she even claims she's not afraid. Right there. Oh, by the way, boom. There she is. She tells everybody. And she goes like in. And she tells our village, Ohio. Oh, there's so much more. So much more. All right. Here's another one. Line at Preston. You see it right there? Here we go. This is all part of our petition. I feel it's only fair since he's broadcasted my married names out there. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. It's only Googleable. It's Googleable. Remember? Let's see. Um, by the way, it's public knowledge. It's public information. Anyone can get it. Just Google him. Oh, that's odd. All we did was Google. And we found 39 aliases up to 40 now. I feel it's only fair since he broadcasted my married names. You mean aliases, 39 up to 40. Because she scams and then she goes and she changes it and scams and goes and changes it, scams and goes and changes it to the world and where I live that he thinks, oh, by the way, I didn't broadcast where she lives. She's posted it on all of her Facebook groups, her address, her phone number, her email address, all of her GoFundMes, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of GoFundMes exploiting a child. It's sickening. It's sickening. Oh, and the world where I live. And he, what he thinks are truths about me and that nowhere near the truth. I figured at least I can do is let you know where he lives and what is and what George's real name is. And why keep lying about it, Jeremy? Well, let's get something very clear. George's real name is George. Her middle name is legally George. In the Arabic culture, the father gives all of the children his name. So there are five children in her family. Two females, three boys. Every single one of them have George in their name. It's their middle name. And one of them even has George as the first name and George as the middle name. So here we go. Here she is again, posting all of our property values, where we live, everything. Oh, by the way, even our, our profile pictures from Egypt, where we were surrounded by AK-47s the entire time by security guards. Oh, here's more. Lynette Preston. Do you see Marla Hughes anywhere? Did Marla? I see Marla. She commented Marla Hughes on her commented, phone. but Lynette's telling the courts Marla did all of this. Marla did all of that. No, I'm pretty sure that name right there is that. Is that Marla? I get it. Marla Marla Hughes is right there. I get it. But Lynette Preston is right there posting it. She posted an aerial map of Hills headquarters. Oh, and by the way, that's we, doxing when you we, do it. The we way do she often did it. say that we have a six thousand square foot house, and um, and this is actually wrong. Oh no, three ba three bathrooms is right, right? Yeah, we have three bathrooms. Four bedrooms is wrong. So this is wrong. Four bedrooms is wrong. We actually have five and five thousand nine hundred ten square feet. That is correct, but that doesn't take into account the the. Uh, wine cellar. So we often, we just round it and we say we have 6,000 square feet. So I don't want anybody to go, oh my goodness, I just saw that. They're a liar. No, we're not a liar. We have 6,000 square feet. And honestly, we, we don't use much of it anyway. And why did we buy it? Why did we spend the money to buy it? Because it's completely and totally isolated and protected. We did it because of these freaks. We did it because these freaks shared with us that we need to protect ourselves first and foremost, and that we have to have to have security the number one issue in our lives. Oh, why? Because of this, Lynette Michelle Preston. I'm going to proudly wear my un in my holster on my property. And if anyone messes with me, I'm going to put a cap in there. Hmm. These two are always talking about the backside, aren't they, George? Mm -hmm. It's an obsession. Doxing may be a new term for some of you. Now, sharing somebody's aliases that you can find in a Google search, that's not doxing. Now, doxing is sharing somebody's address, their whereabouts, their private property with malicious intent. And that is their intent. They've posted that intent. They want people to know when we're not home and where our home is. And obviously, our homes are filled with valuable things. You see us on YouTube finding valuable things all the time. There's things that are even up on the wall right here. For example, that cabinet right there. I know that cabinet is about a $500 champion cabinet. 
And this moose is about a $5,000 moose. At least it was until the Florida humidity. Damage. So I could get it fixed, no doubt. But that moose, when I found it, it's $5,000 moose. So we have other posting here. What they've done is doxed. What we've done is just shown aliases. So we've shown truth. They've shown malicious intent. Now, these are all horrific things that have been posted. Calling George a sand, the N-word. Stating they're going to put nails and trackers. There's the tracker. Trackers on our vehicles. Which makes you wonder, because she just followed us to Walmart. Is there a tracker on our vehicle? I mean, we have not checked it. And I think it might be time. Oh, and here's Crook. Here's Crook with his illegal sign, which, by the way, even the paint, he had to beg for paint on all of these Levy County uh, White paint. Facebook groups. He had to beg for paint to cover up his illegal sign about Russell and Stuart Stewart and Mary and, and Attorney Worm and all of that. And what does he state? He states the 8 foot by 4 foot, 11 foot high sign, which was illegally on their property. They're 501c3. They cannot be for or against any candidate, and they were. Now, Crook is saying, is now ready again to post what... Oh, look at that. Capital W. You think that's in regards to what the hails? Mm -hmm. Capital W. What the fools of Otter Creek are doing to screw over the town. He's insinuating us. Yet again, telling that he's going to put up more signs. Oh, by the way, who puts up signs? Lynette and Crook. We're going to get to that in just a moment. Again, here's more information from our petitions that state this. Uh, Carrie, he's having a conversation with a female named Carrie, or at least a profile named Carrie. I did no attacking, just commenting on 14 foot high was an interesting measurement. It looks like maybe four foot high if that. And on the drone saying, by the way, Crook said he was going to have a drone all over our property. But we didn't Given even put that in Given to him here. by Paul. Yeah, by Paul by Paul Hembry, which incriminates now Paul Hembry as well. Yeah, I, you love how stupid these individuals are. I mean, they are so freaking stupid. All they do is dig deeper holes and deeper holes and deeper holes. And they're all going to get sunk in it in the legal system. All right, and now on the drone saying it could get someone in trouble. I'm careful with my words, and I'm still on the page under my alias. That was sent because I commented as myself as Carrie in the Outer Creek Shady Group Bunch. I'm not worried my profile was private, but nice threat. And what's the threat? John Crook threatens Carrie. Never attack somebody with an open Facebook. I now have collected all the data on you, your friends, your family, and I will be sending them all off to the dark web where they can do whatever they want with them. You That's think, his message to so many people. You think Crook's in trouble the within the web. legal system? Yeah, Crook's mm -hmm. in trouble. Here's another one where Crook, with the help of another, takes all these um, actual toys and pastes my post. Dollar sale. He posted in my dollar sale. So you have to understand, we did a benefit dollar sale for the ARC. And I posted it in the Levy County Facebook groups. Well, what they did is then they photoshopped over it and then Crook posted it saying that I was giving away all these actual toys for a dollar. Now, that's more actual harassment. You think he's in trouble? You better believe he's in trouble. Then Crook goes on to create Otter Creek. Jeremy Hale's the coward of Levy County. And yet, this is the man who told me he would go toe-to-toe. Toe-to-toe! And when he stalks me and then trespasses on my property, he refuses to get out of his car. Oh, and here we go more. Here's more. Who's this from? Oh, this is Jeremy Hales needs to go. No child rapist. Uh, and this is Lynette's stepdaughter saying, yep, that's her handwriting for sure. Well, we appreciate her stepdaughter. Her stepdaughter is actually going to be in court testifying against her, along with other family members. But even beyond that, we have a handwriting expert, the nation's foremost handwriting expert, forensic handwriting expert, who's already finished her entire report stating that 100% Lynette wrote these signs. Now, there were two individuals that wrote these signs. Half of them are Lynette, half of them are somebody else. And it is not John Crook. And we are still, we are still in the process of figuring out who that is. And we will figure it out, and we will, we will pursue legal action and defamation against them as well. Here we go, John Crook again. Is anybody else sick of the coward of Levy County talking about his two-inch pipe? Well, I'm going to guess based on 310 million views. No, 
No, I don't think they are. As a matter of fact, I think they enjoy it. Oh, but let's see. Shouldn't that be private between him and George? And nothing to be proud of uh, must be des des despite... Des, des, this man can't even spell and enunciate or per, he's got no grammar, no syntax, can't even, sentence structure is horrible. Or it's best since she does have, what's that, rectal cancer? Crook is now stating his obsession with the with behind. all of our behinds. Oh, now Crook says, we all need, on 7-13-2023, we all need to say prayers. And set aside her feelings because of the coward of Levy County's girlfriend, his wife's rectal cancer has come back. And if they're going to have to cut it all out, oh, okay. Well, what do you think? What do you think the judge is going to think? When What's they his see obsession that? with rectums? I've had breast cancer and thyroid cancer. That's it. We never mentioned rectal, but he's obsessed with rectums. I think it's pretty obvious what his obsession is. Here we go, Otter Creek, Jeremy Hales, Coward of Levy County. Oh, who's the members? John Crook. Well, who's the admin? the admin? John Crook. Who's the creator? John Crook. And who admitted to it in court? John Crook. Yep. Oh, here we go. Here's John Crook saying, shart in memory of Jeremy. That's oh, a threat right there. Do you understand that is a death threat? In memory of, that's a death threat. And as a matter of fact, when you hear it in Ohio court, you're going to see that it was in Ohio court as a death threat. Oh, but by the way, he he denies, he denies this is him. He denies it's his page. Oh, oh he said he gave it to a friend. Yeah, he gave it to a friend. He uh, knew all about the page. And we'll then... let you know about the yeah. friend that he threw under the bus later. John Cook, admin yet again. I see the coward of Levy County and his, oh, his uh, whole of a uh, wife. I just... I, I don't know where they come up with this information. I didn't even know I got married. I had no clue. None. I mean, I... What do I do? Fall asleep and this stuff just magically happens? George, you fall asleep and all of a sudden you were you, you end up with rectal cancer? I mean, I, I don't get it. They're posting more lies. And as sheep believe it, if God, they aren't stupid. Oh, well, you know what? You know what's stupid? He's projecting. This. This is stupid. This is incriminating. This means jail time. This means fines. This means a whole lot that's going to happen. All right. Well, I guess it's time to put the sign back up, and it will be very interesting to read. Here we go. So they're obsessed they're, with signs. They're obsessed with signs. And behinds. Signs and behinds. Who do you think put the signs up? More incriminating evidence. Oh, by the way, John Crook. Jeremy, would you like me to post the picture of my... <coughs> in George's mouth. You can't take this one down. Oh, trust us. We didn't want to take it down. We wanted a screenshot and take it to court immediately. Oh, along with this as well. Here's Crook brandishing his firearm. Oh, let's see. Lizzie Faley, is this all you can come up with? Repeats. I have a picture of my blank in blank's mouth. Can I post that? Well, all they do is post. And all they do is further incriminate themselves. And what did Thomas do about it? He took this and he, he sealed it, it within the court system. Let's see what George had to say. This is George's opening petitioning letter to Craig DeThomasis. And she says, Your Honor. Capital H. Now we know he's dishonorable. Uh, Your Honor, on 10-10-2023, a temporary civil stalking protection order, CSPO, were granted against Lynette Preston and John Crook, which included 500 distance in all public places because the judge had factual findings on both to be a threat and a harm to myself and Jeremy Hales, my significant other. On 10-30-2023, at 2.07 p.m., Lynette Preston and John Crook stalked myself and Jeremy Hales at the Levy County Sheriff's Office, waited in the parking lot, saw us coming outside, why filming her and Jay Crook violating the CSPO. She reversed, drove parked next to our truck in 20-foot enclosed trailer. Lieutenant asked Preston and Crook to leave the premises. Crook communicated also violating the CSPO. They both knew we planned to be there because we announced it in our YouTube channel the night before. Picks included. Video available with multiple witnesses. On 11-1-2023, a final civil stalking protection order was granted against Lynette and John Crook. They both continue to violate the CSPO, and I continue to fear for my safety and for my life since they are intentionally ignoring the CSPO. Copies included. On 11-13-2023, at 12.55 p.m., Levy County Sheriff case number 23114561. Jay Crook was waiting on the public road on North Outer Creek Avenue, ignoring the 500-foot CSPO when he heard our diesel truck coming out of our driveway. Lynette Preston encouraged him and ignored him 
encouraged him to ignore and violate the 500 foot CSPO. And she was filming us coming down the road. John communicated with us by yelling also violating the CSPO against him. Pics included, video footage are available, plus a report has been made with the Levy County Sheriff's Office. On 11-30-2023 at 3.34 p.m., Levy County Sheriff case number 23-11-4773. By the way, there's been way more cases. Line at Preston drove past my parked vehicle at the Outer Creek Post Office, parked near me. She violated the CSPO by ignoring the 500-foot distance intentionally to intimidate me. She didn't leave immediately as she was instructed by her copy of the CSPO. She checked the display case, the announcements in the parking lot, entered the building, saw me recording her, proceeded to check her P.O. box, walked outside, chatted briefly with another resident, and left. Pics included, video footage is available, and a report has been made with the Levy County Sheriff Office. Your Honor. I am in fear for my safety with both Lynette Preston and John Crook continuously violating the CSPO by ignoring the 500 foot distance. She has harassed me. She's cyber bullied me, cyber stalked me by doxing my personal information publicly on social media, inciting harm and targeting me. Screenshots included. I'm in fear for my safety with John Crook because he has actually harassed me by posting he has pictures of his private part in my mouth, threatened to post them online. Screenshots included. I'm fearful every time I need to drive by the road, post pass her property to get to my home because she has stated she will pop and put a cap in anyone's buttocks screenshot included her and crook have dangerous jail friends she brags about on social media and has stated they plan to throw nails in our driveway causing damage to my vehicle and tires screenshots included line at press and j crook ignoring the cspo has given me mental distress anxiety fear on a daily basis no matter where i go in levy county i now constantly live in fear having to check all my surroundings in hopes that they or their jail friends are not here and i'm requesting that the florida courts take full faith and credit and enforce the ohio cspo add florida injunctions protect Protecting both myself and Jeremy Hales from these dangerous people. Do you understand by Florida law they must take this in full faith and credit, our civil protection orders, they must put it in the system, and they must give us injunctions. And what this judge did is he took all of our fear, and even he's claimed that I don't have a reasonable fear of getting a fair trial under him. Taken all of our fear, all of our documents, and what he has done is he put this in the legal system this volume of book and information and he sealed it so nobody could ever see it or see what he had to say about it we had to take a break in filming this we had a meeting with one of our lawyers yes mark feather and it was a lunch meeting and upon coming back home levy county sheriff deputy was pulling into Lynette and john crooks apparently somebody's reported them for firing shots in town Yet again, have a look. Well, the county sheriff is pulling in. Interesting. How y'all doing? Doing good. Have you heard anybody shooting in the area today? Nope. Maybe they'll finally get arrested today. But what we do know is Judge Craig DeThomasis, he gave no merit, no good faith, no measure to our civil protection orders or an injunctions filed. As a matter of fact, you can see right here, Jeremy Hales, Lynette Preston, and this is what he seals. He seals all of this. We had to pay hundreds of dollars to get this unsealed. And this is what Craig DeThomasis says. Although the petition claims stalking, the facts alleged are insufficient to establish the elements of stalking. As defined by Florida legislature in Florida Statute 784-048, as required for issuance of the injunction relief required as set forth in Florida Statute 784-0485. Okay, if this isn't stalking... I don't know what is when another state's already said it exists and by law he has to accept it but he's giving Lynette a hearing he goes on to say this however the allegations contained in the petition given the prior order of protection issued in Ohio are sufficiently pled as allegate as alleged violations of said order pursuant to 18 USC 2265 and Florida statute 741- 315. Although the petition may be sufficient to plead against alleged violation, the petitioner is required to comply with the provisions of Florida Statute 741-31.
In other words, he said, No soup for the... Oh, wait, no, wait. No injunction for you, Mark Feather! Amazing that this judge can understand and puts in writing they're violating the civil protection orders. And yet, he does absolutely nothing. Nothing to help keep us safe at all. Except he's going to claim that he had all this information sealed for our safety. Typically, that's what happens. When you go in and you file an injunction in Florida, maybe it's just Levy County. I've never really seen it happen this way before. But if you file for an injunction, and if the judge denies it, he will seal it for the petitioner's protection. How in the world can you claim that sealing this information, I mean, even this, we got no response whatsoever. He should have reached out to us and told us this, sent us this. We got nothing. He sealed it, protected it, never wanted us to see it or anybody else. What will protect us is getting injunctions in Levy County and the sheriff deputies actually arresting them every single time they violate it.